To prepare ourselves for this celebration, we now call to mind our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the Glory to God in the highest.
O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And during this Mass, we pray for the intentions of Stephanie Hernandez and Esther de la Garza, eternal rest for Socorro Cantu, Gudelia Gonzalez, Rudy Sines, and Ernest de la Garza. So let's be seated to listen to our reading.
reading from the second letter of Paul to the Romans. On the death of riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? For who has been his counsel? For who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him all for all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We have certain ideas of what he should do, what he should say, in certain circumstances. We have expectations of our school leaders. We have expectations of our teachers, how they should teach our kids. We have expectations of those in a particular role, those who are in public positions. We have expectations of our church leaders, expectations of our priests, what we think they should be, what they should say. Now looking at our gospel reading, at the time of Jesus, the Jews also had expectations. They had lots of expectations of what the Messiah should be like, and what the Messiah should do, and what the Messiah should say. They expected that the Messiah would solve their political problems. They believed that the Messiah would be a military commander who would lead a rebellion against the occupation of their land. But Jesus' idea of what the Messiah should be and what the Messiah should do was completely different to their expectations. He did not encourage conflict or warfare. Instead, he taught a message Remember the Beatitudes. Blessed are the gentle, they shall inherit the land. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. When Jesus asked his disciples that day who people thought that he was, they replied, So thank you, John the Baptist back from the dead. Others came to Elijah, whom they believed would come back again before the time of the Messiah. And others thought it was Jeremiah, one of the prophets, who would come back again. And we can understand why they thought that Jesus was not the Messiah. Because Jesus was not doing, and Jesus was not saying the things they expected the Messiah would. And then Peter proclaimed, You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Because the Father had revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Messiah. Peter and the other disciples now knew Jesus was the Messiah. But they did not understand that Jesus was a peaceful Messiah. Remember the two disciples who walked with him on the road to Emmaus on Easter Sunday evening and said to Jesus, whom they still didn't recognize, our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. After three years of listening to Jesus preaching, after three years of watching him do his miracles, they still did not get it. Even the day of Jesus' ascension into heaven, the Acts of the Apostles tells us that they asked him if the time had come for him to restore the kingdom of Israel. So even after Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to them and walked around and taught them for 40 days, they still did not get it would take the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost on the apostles before they would fully understand the type of Messiah Jesus really was. After Jesus admitted to the disciples that he was the Messiah, he warned them not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah because he did not want to raise false Expectations about his ministry and what he had come to do. And so for that reason, we read that after Jesus multiplied those loaves and fish, he fled back to the hills alone because he knew that the people were
were coming to get him. He knew that they were going to take him by force because they wanted to make Jesus their king. Now that Peter had proclaimed Jesus to be the Messiah and had admitted to his disciples that he is in fact the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus has to correct their false notions of who the Messiah really is and explain to them that he is the suffering Messiah, that he's going to die for his people. Next week, we will hear Jesus correcting Peter. When Peter objected to Jesus suffering and dying in Jerusalem, Jesus came revealing what God the Father's plan was for this world. The problem is, the problem was, that the people were looking at Jesus only from a worldly point of view, with their notion of what the Messiah should do. And so what about us? Where do we get the information that feeds and nourishes our minds and our hearts? Do we take our understanding and the meaning of life and our values for living from the Word? Or do we take our values from Jesus and allow His teaching to feed and to nourish our minds and hearts? If we allow our minds and way of thinking to be formed and influenced by the thinking of this world, we may end up on the wrong track, on the wrong lane. But if we listen to Jesus' words, and if we understand them, then we're going to be blessed people, as Jesus called Peter blessed in our gospel this evening. We belong to a community. Peter was the first hope of our community. We belong to our community that is a caring heart and has very good reasons for leading and guiding us in the way she does. It is out of love and care for us that we have our church teachings. The way of the word often leads to hell, sometimes hell and earth. But the word wants to disguise where it is leading us. Because the word profits when we follow the ways of the word. But if we take our guidance from Jesus because he is the Christ and he is the son of the living God, he is the only one who can save us. So this evening ask yourself, who am I following? The trends of the world, theology or not theology, but the philosophy of the world? Or am I really listening to what Jesus is saying? Am I taking time to read his word, to study it, and then to make it part of my life? If you want happiness, then follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Please stand for a creed. I believe in one God. True God, true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He was given the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, the Lord Christ. 
He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy God. Let us join together to bring our prayers before our Father in heaven. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to work for them to bring others to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God inspire them to find solutions to the needs facing the communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illness, may God bring them healing of mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community here at St. Dominic, may God's grace help us to affirm the dignity of every person especially the unborn, the elderly, the refugee, and the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they hear Jesus' voice as he welcomes them by name into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for these two young men who will be baptized today, and we pray for their moms and dads and their godparents that they will lead by example, that they will show them the difference between right and wrong, and that they will educate them in who Jesus is, and that they will teach them to pray and to be a part of our church community at St. Dominic's. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are recovering from surgery. And we had a number who had surgery this week. And we pray for Elsa McDonald. So we pray for Paul Rodriguez, for Marty Vermales, for Isabel Martinez, for Charles Curo, and uh, for those that didn't know who had surgery this week. For their healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our many parishioners who are suffering, suffering from cancer, who have to go through those painful treatments, those who are diabetic, and those who are suffering from COVID, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for that wonderful rain this morning. We ask you to give us a little bit more, not too much, but just a little <laughs> bit, and. Uh, to protect all those who may be in harm's way of those two storms or hurricanes that are ready to make land. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my friends, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption 
through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the angels and the saints, we praise you as we sing. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and again, giving thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo and Michael, our bishops, clergy and people everywhere. 
Remember your servants, Ernest de la Garza, Rudy Sainz, Gudelia Gonzalez, and Socorro S. Cantu, whom you have called from this life to yourself, and grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our lives, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory that are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Amen. is going to be Zoom or Google Meet or, or whatever, okay? So please register them. The information is in your bulletin, okay? Um, the same for anybody who needs sacraments. I'm talking about adults. Uh, if you don't have First Communion or Confirmation or even Baptism, now is the time to register because we're going to begin real soon. Uh, those classes as well will be until Christmas will be Zoomed. Um, anybody, birthdays? I know my friend John is celebrating 80 years today. Look at him. That looks pretty good for an old guy, doesn't it? Yeah. And you got a birthdays over there? Right there. All right, I know you're not 80. Two of you back there got birthdays? Okay, anybody else? One over there? Mario, is it your birthday? Okay. Almighty God, we ask you to bless these, all these girls, oh, except for John, we got a bunch of women, celebrating the gift of life. We thank you especially for John's long life, Lord. He's been happy and healthy and always involved in, in ministries, and we thank you for his family and for all of your families. We ask you, Lord, that you will be good examples uh, to everyone that meets you, and that through you they will see the love of God for us. And may God bless you on your birthdays, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Happy birthday. <clears throat> Any wedding anniversaries? Nobody? Okay. Uh, oh, who's that guy? Oh, my dear God. How many years? 38. Lord. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this good lady from St. Thomas, who has put up with this guy from Trinidad and Tobago for 38 years, Lord. I guess it's easy being an islander. You're patient and kind and forgiving. And you've lived that over the last 38 years. So we thank you for your leadership. We thank you for your many ministries, not only here, but in other places that uh, Wayne has been stationed. And we ask you, Lord, to bless them with good health and happiness and that all their kids and grandkids will follow their example and be good people and maybe future deacons. Bless them on their 38th anniversary, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You give her a kiss if you want to. But keep your mask on, she said, okay? All right. Any questions, guys? I'm a bit early, and I hate leaving you out early. You won't be getting value for money, I think, so. Oh, reminded of money, you pick up the bulletins on the way out, and 
That's where you also find our collection baskets. So I appreciate your generosity and I appreciate you living with all the directives and starting Monday, we're gonna begin that novena that God will soon find a cure for this virus, okay? And that pray for all those who are suffering from it right now. Any questions about anything? End of the year financial reports in the bulletin this week. So check it out, see where your money went. All right, let's pray. Oh, give a big welcome to our two young Catholics, okay? There they are. I think they're the quietest babies I've had in quite a while, okay? I had one earlier today that cried all during it. I was a girl, I'm sorry. But anyway. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now may God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for being here. It's great to look out at a full church and uh, let your friends know it's the safest place to be right now is at St. Dominic's Church. Yeah. Today, this church has been disinfected at least six times because we've had a bunch of masses and things today. So it's the safest place you can be. So much safer than HEB, okay? So bring your friends with you, okay? This is the day that the Lord